Yeah, it started back over. It's still on there, though. Okay. Yeah, it's still on there. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, viewers, to part two to uh, how to wire up a furnace. Once again, we're talking about how to wire up a furnace, an electric furnace, and a heat pump system. This will be an air handler. Still the same thing. So you get a heat pump. The compressor is the main source of heat. And that will be a backup. Well, anyway, we was talking about last how to wire up a fan relay. Now, we mentioned here you got normally open contact and normally closed contact. You have three circuits. The two circuits up top are what you would use or what we call the switching circuits. What we use to send power to and from our fan relay. And the bottom is where our low voltage controls will hook up. And this will energize or de-energize the fan relay. Now, when the fan relay is energized, our normally open contacts do what? Close. And our normally closed contacts open up. So that means they will stop power on normally closed when it's energized. Normally open will pass power when it's energized. When it's not energized, then we can pass power to our normally closed circuits. Now I used to think that every time a furnace ran, the sequencer and the fan relay was always energized. But no, for some applications, it, it doesn't, it is not energized all the time. For example, the fan relay for electric heat is not energized. It passes power through the normally closed circuit to our fan most of the time at low speed unless the unit is using one speed. But it will pass power through normally closed circuit. It doesn't matter which circuit it use as long as the two different speeds are on two different circuits. So these are good things to keep in mind. Also, if you look at our fan relay, you notice we have a common terminal. This common terminal is common to two and is common to three. On this particular circuit, four is common to five and common to six. But five and six is never common to each other. In fact, they only operate off of one, whatever one needs. If it's sending or receiving power, these two circuits operate off of the common ter terminals. And that's very important to know. For example, if I want to pass power to the fan and I send power to five, and then I put power on a leg of uh, power on six to go to the fan, it would never get there because this is closed, this is open. When you energize, this is closed and this is open, it do the opposite. Never, power will never make it to the fan. So we have to use the common terminals. So if I put a leg here, or re had a receiving power here on four, or either one, and I put to where I wanted to go from five to the fan, or from six to the fan, when it is energized, it'll receive power through six, because that'll close. When it is de-energized, it can receive power through five, because that's naturally or normally closed. So keep that in mind, that you have to have something on one or four to make it run. And it has to operate through either one of these, depending on what you want. But you can never have it just on five and six or two and three and expect it to operate and not be on the common terminals. Now, we have some pictures here, of, or not some pictures, but some actual fan relays. Now here's one, if you can zoom in on that. This is our switching fan relay, okay? And just like I mentioned, you got one circuit, you got another circuit, and then you got the low voltage circuit. Let me bring that up close over here. Okay, I'm gonna walk this up closer so you can see it. This right here. You can get closer if you want. You can see the numbers on it. See the schematic on the, on the relay is that? Only open, no one closed. Okay, go ahead. Now that's the voice of another instructor helping me with the video. And this ain't going to be a perfect video. We are instructors first, or HVAC people first.
This is something we're trying to do. Here's another type of fan relay. Now, this fan relay looks like a sequencer, and it acts like a sequencer, but it's generally used as a fan relay. And it, too, has a normally closed or normally open circuit, and on the bottom is where we receive the 24 volts that cause it to act like a sequencer. And here's some more. This is one by train. This has a little board on it. And whenever you see anything with a board, don't get scared of it. They're just trying to make it more efficient. They're trying to take AC current and turn it into DC current. Say to make it more efficient, save energy, operate more efficiently. That depends on the manufacturer. Now here's another common type of fan relay that you may see. Some call it a box relay. The low voltage on the bottom, normally closed, normally open across the top circuit. And every relay, every relay is going to have a schematic drawing on the side of it. If it don't, don't use it because you can cause something to go terribly wrong. Very important that the fan be wired correctly especially if it has more than one speed. And here's another fancy type of fan relay. So we see we got many relays, but how can you identify a fan relay? How can you identify a sequencer? Well, sequencers are always, or whatever controlling the heat element, are always have a white wire going to it, unless they ran out. Fan relay gonna always have a green wire going to it to control it. So let's start wiring this up. I don't have green and I don't have necessarily the color white, but from the thermostat, you'll come from W to the sequencer. And it usually will be a white wire. From the fan relay, You'll come from G, which represents green, and it's usually a green wire. So keep that in mind. You can't go wrong. This represents a wire. Usually it'll be a little brown wire, and it'll have green in it or have white in it. And you'll wire it from the thermostat to the furnace, or from the furnace to the thermostat. And you'll put W, white, to whatever crow controlling the heat. In this scenario, we're using the sequencer. On a fan relay, you would use green. Now, everything has two legs of power. Okay? And our low voltage circuit of anything from 120 down in electricity is going to have a neutral leg and a hot leg. Now, the neutral leg, I like to call that my common leg in low voltage. Okay? I like to give a name to it, but we're going to call it neutral so no one will be confused. That neutral leg or common leg will go straight to what is power. Now, so that we can have two legs of power on our sequencer. Now, where is the other leg? Where is W getting this power from? Well, on the transformer, our low voltage source of power, the other leg, you have two wires coming up transformer. One will go straight to R. Okay? The only thing the thermostat does, and that's why we call it a switch, is pass this one leg of power, depending on what you got it set for, heating or cooling, to W for sequencer for electric heat, fan on, go through G, or cooling, will energize the fan automatically through the thermostat to G, to our fan relay. So that's all that that thermostat does is pass this one leg. The other side of the transformer will go straight to the sequencer and straight to the fan relay. And this is pretty much the low voltage circuit. I don't care how you get out there and do it. What you do, W controls the heat, G controls the fan. Whatever fan relay, do you see G there? You know it's going to have to have this common. 
And notice I just put it here and ran it here. Well, most times on most sequences, you have a little double mail tab at the bottom. Okay, can you zoom in on that? See the double mail tab at the bottom? And you might can't hardly see it too well. But you can hook something else on it to feed power. One thing about electricity, if I'm touching power, and you touching me, and you touching that person, we all in a circuit together. So they're touching right here, so they're in a the circuit together. Now another way you can wire it up, electricity, you can do it this way. You can put it here, and run it here, and put you a, have one of those little caps on it right here. It don't matter. That's still all in the same circuit together. And also, it don't matter which side you have this leg on or that leg on. In other words, I can have W on that side and have common on this side. The main thing you got to remember is don't have both of them on the same side. Then you're going to have a direct short. Two legs of power, each leg has to go on both sides of the load. In this case, it's a low voltage load. Same thing for the fan relay. It don't matter which side you put either one of these on, as long as they're both are not on the same side. And everything in electricity, in single phase electricity, has two legs of power. The only thing that has three legs is a three phase. And most of the time, the only thing that's three phase in our units is the compressor. Now, I also got some more terminals up here, why you know. And if, in uh, future videos, we're going to discuss why for cooling and heating on a heat pump. And O for the reversing valve. And how they too do the same thing. All they do is pass power from red straight to where we're controlling, and everything will get common off the transformer. So that's how we wire up our low voltage. Now we're going to wire up our high voltage real quick. Give a break. Can you pause that for a minute? I don't know how to pause it without, uh, without going to the next one. Okay, when you hit the record, it didn't? Yeah, when I, went, when I hit the record, it stopped, it stopped the first one. Then when I pressed record again, it went on to another one. Okay, I'm going to have to pull it up and find...